Hi guys, I'm Ritu and with me as always Manglam. You know Manglam, growing up you had two kinds of eaters. There were hmm. people like you, the vegetarians and there were well. people like me, the non-vegetarians. But That's what correct. have you today? I mean there's vegans, there's pescatarians. There's eggitarians, people who are vegetarian but eat only egg, make that exception. There's lacto-vegetarians, there's evo-vegetarians or I, I don't even know the kind of terrians that exist now. It's just... A lot of them are actually annoying as well. But you know, to be very honest, <laughs> to be very honest, I eat vegetarian food and the only egg I consume are in desserts. Well, I don't know what category that you fall into. Desserted but, you know, Indian. <laughs> but you know what, the fact of the matter is these evolving diet preferences, the health consciousness and rising awareness for climate change, all of this has given rise to a food revolution of sorts and that is what we're going to discuss today on Mad About Markets. And you know what, these ingredients for success of this food revolution, you have the new protein options which are based on plants, which are microorganisms, fermentation and cultivated through animal cells. So these are the kinds of alternative protein products products which aim to one mimic the look the feel and the nutritional profile of your regular animal based meats and products and that is what we're going to discuss today the big question how big is the market how large is this alternate protein market what pace is it growing at and how quickly will it get to the critical mass that we're talking about well the world's consumers love animal based proteins so much so that in 2020 we ate nearly 574 million metric tons worth of meat, seafood, dairy and eggs. That's almost 75 kilograms per person. That's also the average weight of a human being on earth. The total protein consumption was 587 million tons, of which 13 million metric tons was alternate proteins. This is just 2020. But a report by BCG says that this market for alternate proteins, which is the green part that you see here, could grow all the way from 13 million tons to close to 97 million metric tons by 2035. And that's just the base case scenario. The bulk of this, of course, will be plant-based meats at about 69 million metric tons. So that's a lot of plant-based meats that we're talking about. And you know, the plant-based alternatives, actually, if you look at the overall space, hmm. the study also finds that the alternative protein forms only 2% of the total animal protein market. So that is the potential for growth because by 2035, it is expected that they will make up almost 11% of the overall protein market. And that again, like you said, was a base case scenario, right? In a faster technological innovation scenario where there's full regulatory support, it could speed up growth all the way to 22% in an optimistic scenario. So huge potential for growth for from 2% all the way to 22%. On that note, let's bring in our experts on the show today. And it's a packed house. We have Deepika Bhan, the president of Packaged Foods at Tata Consumer Products, Ashu Fake, the vice president and business head of Frozen Foods at ITC, Varun Deshpande, who is the managing director at the Good Food Institute, are some of the people joining us. And that's not all. We also have Sandeep Singh, who is the co-founder of Blue Tribe Fruits. Remember, this is the one that has Virat Kohli's investment in it. Shraddha Bhansali, the COO and co-founder at Evo Foods 2, will join us here in the studio in just a bit. But let's go across to Varun first. Varun, what according to you is the size of the global alternate protein market? And what according to you again is the potential that it has in India itself? So at the Good Food Institute India, you know, we've seen a lot of projections from the likes of Kearney, UBS, JP Morgan, uh, the companies that kind of size these markets globally uh, have said that the, the plant-based meat market in particular is worth anywhere from about 90 billion to $370 billion globally by the year 2030 or 2035. Right. And um, that's obviously a huge multi-billion dollar global opportunity. The Indian opportunity within that is also sizable, right? Within this decade, the modeling that we've done indicates that we can get to about anywhere from about 1800 crores to about 3000 crores plus um, just for the domestic consumption of plant-based meat with additional uh, roughly the same size of export opportunity, right? So if you look at the, the significant opportunity that we have in India, it's not just for the domestic market, but also to fulfill some of that very large global demand for these products. No, absolutely. And, you know, various studies have various estimates. But Sandeep, let me come to you on that note, because, you know, you've been one of the early players in the market. What is the typical target customer? I mean, are you focusing on the vegetarians who are curious to try uh, this mock meat? Or is it non-vegetarians who you think will shift because of various reasons? And who is it a harder sell to? First things first, we are not for the vegetarian population. We believe if vegetarians eat our meat, it's, it's achieving nothing on the global scale. Uh, it's not reducing greenhouse emission. It's not saving animals' lives. 
So we are very clearly for the non-vegetarian uh, only, I would say. Vegetarians are welcome to eat it, but if, to make an impact, we need the meat-eating consumer to switch to us. Now, of course, you rightly said that unlike the West, it's, it's, we don't eat meat like twice a day like in the West. So we believe even if somebody's eating meat, say, thrice a week, if he switches to Blue Tribe once a week, we have made a positive impact. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who are very conscious, the consumer and the youth of today are very conscious about the impact on the environment. They are a very discerning set of audiences we have today, uh, consumers we have. So a lot of people who are, you know, they know that what meat, uh, industrial meat does, and they are very conscious and they would like to kind of reduce the greenhouse emission. The youth is very conscious. So the conscious consumer will switch to this and they are switching. Ashu, how has the consumer acceptance been and what are your expansion plans in this space? Uh, plant-based diets, if you look at the portfolio that ITC MasterChef has today, in my plant-based diets portion, there is enough and more uh, for consumers seeking alternates in plant, uh, because uh, the idea is, are we giving consumers enough beyond just paneer uh, as an alternate in the veg space? So in my portfolio, I have products as, as beetroot kebab. If you look at my kebab range, I have beetroot kebabs, I have a dahi kebab, I have a falafel kebab, which is plant-based in a way, right? Um, uh, so that's the space we operate. And now I've introduced the incredible nuggets and incredible uh, uh, burger patties, which is in the plant-based uh, space, as, as, as we say. Uh, and if, if you're a non-vegetarian, you have an option to try out the plant-based, or you can also try out the alternate protein in, in the incredible burger patties and nuggets that we have, uh, because it gives you a texture and a feel which is similar to, non uh, to, to a non-veg uh, bite but it is obviously in the vegetarian space.